Um, I just pretty much believe that it was a hundred percent inerrant, um, and that for the for the most part, it was literal. There were metaphors, I guess, when you look at the parables and, and stuff like that. But for the most part, um, everything in it was literal. It was a six-day creation. The earth is approximately 6,000 years old if you go back from Jesus and follow, trace back the genealogies. And, um, but for me, it was 100% literal. So maybe the author of it wasn't as important as the message? You know, I really didn't think a whole lot about the authorship. I mean, I, I believe that Matthew wrote Matthew and Luke wrote Luke and so on, so on and so forth. Um, but what evidence do we have of that? You know, they, they write in third person, which is a little awkward and weird. Um, and a lot of scholars that I've read talk about they're really anonymous books, the Gospels. Bart Ehrman does a, a great job on that. Um, I even remember reading some of William Lane Craig's stuff, and he even talks about how we don't know who the author of Luke really was. You know, so we have an apologist admitting that. That's in his book. Um, um, gosh, what is that? On Guard. Um, so, but I didn't know all this stuff. I didn't realize all this stuff. I wasn't really into textual criticism at the time. But once I started reading and studying and, and learning and looking at both sides of the coin, I was really surprised that um, um, we don't know as much about the authors as, as, as we think. What deterred you from accepting a more fluid and maybe metaphorical interpretation of the Bible? Probably because I, I was a, a little bit more fundamental and, and conservative within my Christianity. Um, yes, my parents were a little bit more liberal, but I did grow up in the um, Christian culture. And then in high school, again, after becoming a Christian, I became very evangelical. Um, so uh, evangelicals are not flexible when it comes to Scripture. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, it's, it's God's Word. And there are no errors. And so I was not flexible at all, you know, whatsoever. But a, a person who's more liberal... Um, within their Christianity, I grew up in a more uh, liberal denomination, there's a lot more flexibility in there about it maybe not being 100% liberal uh, or 100% literal. Mm -hmm. And so f for me, I was just very uh, conservative, so there was no flexing there whatsoever. How do you think having a literal interpretation affected your deconversion process? Oh, wow. That's a good question. You know, it, it, it withstood it for years. I, I think it, my deconversion was actually very slow because I had that little, you know, rug I talked about and I kept on tripping over it. But here's the deal with, with being conservative on the whole flip side, where a liberal might flex a little bit more. Conservative won't flex. It's very strict. And so once, in a, once there's enough pressure there, it's either f stiff or it crumbles. There's really no in between. So once I started uh, doing some reading and, and studying both sides of, of the coin and doing textual criticism and studying history and archaeology and anthropology and science and this and that, there were enough cracks um, within my belief that it, it shattered quickly. So in some ways, I think a, cons a very conservative evangelical Christian could almost deconvert faster than someone who is more liberal.